Hello and welcome to this little session on load stepping in Optum G2. What I mean by load stepping is several things. Um, the simplest case of which is possibly uh, the generation of a load displacement curve for, um, um, let's say, a foundation. So let's draw a box of soil and let's draw a um, let's draw some sort of foundation on top here, and let's say that is a Tresca material, that is a rigid material, we have standard fixities. And then we have some, some load on top here, and um, we, want, we would like to generate the load displacement curve for this foundation. The simplest way of doing that is to apply a multiplier distributed load and then run and a multiplier elastoplastic analysis. So multiplier elastic, elastoplastic analysis is, you could say, a combination of limit analysis and elastoplastic analysis. Elastoplastic analysis in the sense that a sequence of elastoplastic steps are processed and limit analysis in the sense that you take that to the um, ultimate limit. All the usual element types, upper, lower, and six node, 15 nodes, and the others are all available. So you can actually do sort of lower bound load displacement analysis to failure um, in this way. Now, the load stepping itself is described in the examples manual. Uh, load, I think it's load, I think it's example 20, yeah, it's 29. It's an introductory. Um, example to that. Uh, so it's sim 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 very similar to what I, I've just sketched on the screen. And then there are some settings. We see here there is this NE, elastic steps, NP, plastic steps, and then beta, step control. What that basically refers to, uh, so the a typical load displacement curve is sort of an approximately, a, a, you could say, a smooth, linear, elastic, perfectly plastic curve. And what the number of elastic steps refers to is the number of steps you would like up to when things start to become sort of fairly plastic. Uh, and then the number of plastic steps is, is, is the remaining um, number of steps until you come out here to something resembling failure and beta, this value here, uh, the default value is five, is a sort of a step size control parameter. Um, the higher the beta is, the more aggressive, you could say, the time stepping is, and the lower it is, the more cons conservative it is. I'll give you full examples here. So uh, let's start with five, and then let's run an analysis. and. You see in the anal I've, I've taken 10 elastic and 10 plastic steps. So you see in the analysis window here, this of course doesn't is not capable really of plotting any displacement because what displacement would that be? But it's it's capable of plotting the external work, uh, so the force up here times the displacement versus the load multiplier. So that gives you a sort of a nice looking load displacement type curve, um, and we see it it moves something like that. That's not too surprising. Now, if you want the actual load displacement curve, you would insert a result point up here. And then let's do that and rerun. And uh, we can then go into XY plots and then plot. Uh, well, UY is, is going to look a little bit uh, awkward. Um, but uh, we could plot the u, sort of the numerical u, the total displacement. So that looks something like this. And this curve here, uh, by the way, you can access the data. Usually you would not be happy with, with the way this looks, although there is some possibility for customizing the line thickness, um, markers. All right, I mean, uh, you, can, you, can, you can customize it fairly well. The um, the uh, the text here on the labels and the font sizes and everything else, but 
If you're still not happy, then you can access the data simply by selecting the curve and then going in here and then it's copy paste and then you go into um, well Excel for example and you can paste it here and here here we go here is here is the data then good uh, so that's the simplest way of generating load, dis load displacement curves and just about this uh, step control let's try a couple of Let's take one with two and one with ten. And then let's see how that looks. So the one with two is sort of a slightly more careful. It it and it won't necessarily come all the way to, to failure either. Um, whereas the one with ten is is more aggressive. It pushes on in a in a more aggressive way and will in this case, since beta equals 5 leads to failure, then 10 definitely is going to be failure as well. And maybe we'll even be too far out on the, on the load displacement curve. We're not really very interested in these additional steps here, right? So, but if we plot the three, first the one with 5, the default value, that looks actually pretty perfect. Then 2, not fantastic. And 10, not really fantastic either. So the default parameters in this case turned out to be turned out to be the right ones, but that's not a given for for any case. So you might need to to adjust this beta, this uh, step size control parameter a little bit, or um, you can do one of a number of other things. So there is the possibility to do what is um, there are various other possibilities here. Let's just clone this initial stage here and then have a look at what other possibilities we have in the load stepping. We have the scheme auto. That's basically what I've been running now, uh, right? It's sort of that it runs in an automatic way and what you get is what you get. And most of the time you get something that looks reasonable, but there's also times when you get something that you wish would be a little bit better. Target allows you to um, do something about that. So this target scheme allows you to go to a target displacement in the course of a number of predefined steps. Uh, and what displacement are we talking about? We are talking about the displacement at the first result point. So if you have several results points, it's the first result point uh, we're talking about. And we can actually override that. So we can say, is this a control point? Yes or no? Uh, uh, yeah, I had actually forgot about that. So if we want to do it with respect to the point down here, so this is a result point by default, the first one. The second one uh, says yes as well. That should actually be no. But anyway, if you have one result point, that uh, is um, the point that the, the dis it's the displacements at that point that this target displacement refers to. And if we look at what we had before, we had uh, a displacement. It's the absolute displacement here, up here at this point of um, 0.03 and we did that this was in 20 steps right 10 elastic and 10 plastic so let's now to try to do the same in 10 steps 0.03 so this is sort of rather more convenient often than um, but you have to have some idea of what displacement of course you want to take your system too, but let's just plot the first one, the auto again, with 20 load steps, and then this one uh, with a target load step, and uh, with, 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 with a target displacement, but only 10 steps. And of course, this one is a little more crude, a little more coarse than uh, the one with 20 steps. You can change that to 20, and then you will have pretty much the same. So um, so that's that's those are those are two ways of doing um, doing load displacement analysis or uh, yeah load displacement analysis. Then there is another way, and we've changed things recently, and that's sort of basically why I'm I'm producing this little uh, video here because um, if we look at the final load up here, what did we end up with? Let's say the results are not available. 
Okay, um, we ended up with about 185 kPa, so a multiplier of 185, and with for a for a uh, unit multiplier load. And so, if we change this instead to a fixed load, and then went to something like say 100, and let's just go 100, and let's go 180. Um, we could, in principle. We could, in principle, run this as an elastoplastic analysis. So, an elastoplastic analysis has, is an analysis where the load is not exactly incremented; the load is, is fixed. So, we could apply this load in of a uh, of 180 kPa in in uh, one load step, and we can see how that goes. And uh, we have a displacement up here of whatever, something a little less than what we had before. Of course, the load displacement curve is, is almost horizontal up at that level of loading. Um, what we used to have up here under settings was, was, the number of was the number of load steps. And um, now it's been moved to advanced settings because it's actually a setting that in the vast majority of cases is best left at, at one. Um, it is really not recommended to do load stepping with elastoplastic analysis. Not that it, it, you can't do it, but there's just no real point in doing it. It's uh, more efficient to um, and, and much more convenient as well to use the multiplier elastoplastic, either with the auto or with the target option that I've just gone through. But we could, in principle, um, change that to 10, and the load would then be incremented by in, in steps of, of, well, 18. KPA um, from up to 180 KPA, and um, that, of course, the result is going to be slightly different between whether you have a single load step or you have 10, right? Because there's some path dependence. So, um, so, the, but it's 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 a very slight difference. We can plot the displacements. Let's try to do that. The vertical displacements, and let's plot the vertical displacement for a single step. And that's, uh, yeah, then we would need to, of course, have equal scales. I'm not going to do that, but, but there's, there's a slight difference in these two cases, as expected. <coughs> now, but what are you going to do with 10 load steps? What are you going to plot? Well, you could plot the, uh, on the, on the x-axis, you can plot the displacement, and then on the, uh, on the other axis, you could plot the, the load increments, or maybe the external work. Would that work? Yeah, that's. It's not really. It's not really. In terms of plotting, this is not really extremely convenient, right? Uh, maybe the load increments is actually the better one, or maybe it's even better to 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 to. to uh, turn them around, something like that, I don't know. But, so, 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 so not really, uh, not really f a fantastic thing um, to do this. Uh, it's of course a great thing to be able to just do an elastoplastic analysis, find the displacements for a given load in a single step. But I would say if you think you need more than a single step, then you are talking sort of multiply elastoplastic type load stepping. And that's what I would very much recommend that you use. Another possibility, and that's actually an elastoplastic analysis, another possibility is to run things with, um, with displacement control. And if we get rid of this load here, and then we, for that we need a, a structural element. But I can, put, I can use a rigid plate and let me make this plate so that it is one that sort of moves straight down. So I'm going to prevent rotation, and I'm going to, uh, of course, release the degree of freedom in the y direction. Now what I can do is I can actually impose a displacement here. And that's go down to the 1 here. And that displacement should be, um, let's say, minus 0 0.03. That was the total displacement before, and there was a bit of rotation. So it's not exactly the same before, but we pushed this one down by three centimeters. Right? 
So a displacement of three centimeters is prescribed now. And this, in this case, the number of load steps uh, really matters, right? Because um, this displacement is enforced, this total displacement of three centimeters is then enforced in the course of, in this case, 10 load steps. You can, of course, use one, but it, it makes sense to use uh, more than one. It's a w another way of sort of generating load displacement curves. And so what if we go in here, again on the x-axis, we want the, the, the total displacement, which is the same as the downward displacement, of course, in this case, because we don't have any lateral displacement. And then on the other axis, we can plot the uh, ah, yeah, um, that was my bad. We need actually a result point over here at the reaction in order to pick up um, in order to pick up the reactions, the forces at at that reaction. So I'm going to do that, and then uh, we want, uh, and here we want. Ah, so it's it's okay. My bad. Stage seven and point two reaction. We want the reactions. Yes, thank you. And let's just have the full reaction. Yeah, I think the Y reaction, which is the one we are interested in. Yeah, it's going to be negative, just due to the sign conventions. But we can plot the sort of the total reaction, and that's the one shown here. There will be, I guess, a small X reaction. That's very small. It's very small. So this is pretty much the Y reaction. I mean, that X reaction is, of course, only due to the fact that the mesh is not completely symmetric. And it's very small. So that's another way of generating uh, load displacement curves by displacement control. But the multiplier elastoplastic is, is yeah, well, both work. I mean, it, it, you can have, of course, cases where, where, load, where the load control is, is more um, appropriate and where displacement control is, is more appropriate. It sort of depends, but you can do both. <coughs> now, just very, um, the final thing I just wanted to say is that I see a lot of times that people do staged excavation type or stage construction type problems. So, for example, something like this and with a, uh, let's make it over here, with a, with a sort of a sheet pile and then, um, and then um, excavate, you shouldn't, oh no, of course this, you determine the initial stresses first and then a new stage where you would that which would be an elastoplastic stage and where you would then uh, excavate and I'm going to excavate a huge amount of material let's try something like that and for that I think I'll have to put in a, I'm pretty sure I'll have to put in a fixed end anchor so starting from this the initial stresses and then I remove this material and insert an anchor at the same time and the question is then, what should the number of load steps be for this operation? And the answer is that the load number of load steps should be one. There's really nothing gained from increasing this number of load steps to anything above one. If you think that the uh, change from one stage to the next is too extreme, which it, you could argue it, it definitely is in this case, well then you uh, uh, should um, you should you should have a more gradual transition of the geometry. You should remove this, do the excavation in in the course of a of a of a larger number of steps than just a single one. But using load steps greater than one is it's not really a particularly good idea. What it just means is that when you transition from this situation to this situation, so you have this and then you remove. A huge amount of material and you insert a, um, an anchor here. But by removing this material you of course have some residual forces. So 
you can imagine you have some forces that are of a certain certain magnitude in order to keep this sort of initially stable. And then you decrease these forces to zero, and that's basically what the load stepping does. It decreases these residual forces that are in place to make this situation equivalent to this situation. Um, and and so these residual forces are decreased in the course of a number of load steps. But that's not really a very physical thing to do, of course. I mean, it's a completely fictitious thing to do when excavation is removal of material. It's not somehow a gradual and uniform reduction of the residual forces that we have here to start with when we have just transitioned from one stage to the next. So uh, you, it's a waste of time to use more than one load step, and the result that you get out at the end of the day is, in all likelihood, it's going to be a bit different from what you get with a single load step, but it's not necessarily going to be more correct. The only way to really uh, uh, ensure the correctness of these types of stage construction is to use to have a more gradual transition of the geometry between the stages. So, but let's just see for the for the sake of, of just I'm kind of getting curious now. What would it mean to use a instead of a single load step, ten load steps here? You see, you you, you have some weird you can have some weird uh, effects as well with some difficulties to converge some convergence difficulties to start with. It's because this is a nonlinear problem, and and just sort of shrinking these residual forces is not necessarily really uh, <laughs> a um, a great thing to do. So let's look at the displacements. That's how it looks for ten steps, and that's how it looks for oh, that's how it looks for a single step. So we are at. Let me just try to blow that up by the same yeah so the 10 step here uh, there's a difference uh, it's quite a quite a quite a significant difference well actually no it seems there's not a huge sig significant difference so why do they look so different if they're almost the same That's weird. So this is 0 0.0039, and I've scaled it to 100 here, and 0 0.01, and it's scaled to 100 as well. Ah, OK, OK, OK. I think, uh, yeah, of course, it's the total displacements we should plot. So this is a single load step. 1, 10, 1, 1, 10. So almost the same, and both of them being somewhat questionable due to a far too extreme transition from, from this initial stage to um, the final stage here. Load steps is not going to help you. It's just a waste of time, and it's not, it's even physically, I think, dubious. So, um, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I think I've covered the different ways of doing load stepping: multiply, elastoplastic, auto, or target. Then elastoplastic analysis: use a single step, or you can of course use um, displacement control. That's a possibility as well. And then when it comes to stage construction, stay away from anything um, greater than one in terms of load steps. So um, that's it. And uh, I'll see you next time.